Hey guys, Victor here. Before we get started with today's episode, I'd like to officially announce that TechHeads is on Patreon, where you can support the show for as little as $5. It is absolutely not expected of any of you guys to do so, but we really appreciate every penny. This goes towards helping us with the cost of gear, editing, distribution, and keeping us caffeinated. So if you want to show your support, feel free to check us out on patreon.com slash techheads. Now on with the show. Four, three, two, one, 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 one. So, here we go. How do you all feel tonight? Tech Heads, back again. This time, we're bringing you an extra special episode. We can call it the early bird special, because right now it's 7, 12 (laughs) a.m. And, (laughs) you know, Saturday morning, usually not my vibe to wake up this early, but if it's for the pod, I'm more than happy to do it. So, um, I guess we could, I guess we could say that we would be recording in the we small hours in the morning, just like our intro song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, good morning, I, everyone. <laughs> good morning, tech heads. Um, do you? Uh-huh. I don't even know if we've ever talked about this, but do you? Mm-hmm. Do you know the song in our intro song? No, no, I don't think so. It's a. It's like a deep track Frank Sinatra song, and it's called in oh. the. We- yeah, it's called... Um, I think you told me a little while ago it was a Frank Sinatra song. Yeah, I need to listen to the original. It's called In the Wee Small Hours of the Morning. Ah. So, kind of matches the vibe now, I guess. I, well, I don't know yeah. if that means... I don't know if that refers to, like, like really early, like 2 a.m. early, or if that uh-huh. really means, like, you know, 6, 7 a.m. So, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe it doesn't match at all, and maybe I'm wrong. Um, maybe maybe we're going to have to record like a really, really, really early episode. <laughs> <laughs> On second thought, I'm too scared to look it up. I'm just going to say uh-huh. it, it makes sense. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, virtually joined with me as always is Anna Osik. So how's it hanging? It's all good. And the, obviously not as early here. You know, I've been awake for a little bit because of the dog. Obviously, the, the usual, you know, every single day of the week, you got to wake up at seven ish, take the dog out. And yep. then I don't really go back to bed, especially on weekdays when I have to log into work. But today was the same. So I was just watching um, the Formula One Ru- uh, Russian GP, like the qualifying session, because, you know, Saturdays are qualifying, Sundays are the race. And then I had to go on a donut run um, to get my girlfriend and her coworkers uh, some Krispy Kreme donuts. And Aww. I was just like rushing, you know, in between places, but I made it. So, yeah, it's all good. Aww. Didn't I didn't need my coffee today because there was already plenty to keep me awake. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I saw your message at like 6 a.m. I was like... All right, let's get up. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I do the same thing. T- take the dog out. And usually, like, I wake up at 7 a.m. like every day. Just mm-hmm. like I, I enjoy waking up early and I like I feel good. Yeah. But 6 a.m. I haven't done that in a long time. And it made a bit, bit of a difference. And I feel like it, it's such a nerdy thing. But I feel like it was like just a couple hours ago that I was up late playing Red Dead Redemption, sipping a margarita, Mm -hmm. chilling out. So then when I woke up, I was like, I was literally just awake. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. I feel like it's such a difference. It's funny because, I mean, I don't know if it was dark when you you got up at, was it? Yeah, it's starting to get dark. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I also have a really hard time. I was just remembering yesterday when I still had to go to work, um, you know, physically, like uh, be on site then. I had to wake up before seven o'clock to be able to make it on time. And Mm. it was crazy because, yeah, it was super dark. I was like, there's no way I'm going to be awake, you know, for this. uh, Like the car ride was full on autopilot mode. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So um, how did I get to work today? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But it's nice to wake up when it's already sunny. And the the weather here in Florida has been nice for the past two, three days. Um, You know, it's been breezy. Last night, we spent all our evening on the 
on the balcony because we got the furniture and, you know, we have our little bench. So we were just out there and we can see Disney fireworks from here. Oh, how about that? Yeah, it was fun. Wow, that's amazing. I haven't seen fireworks. I, I don't think um, we're allowed to have fireworks anymore because of all the all the fires. So Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there was true. actually a fire. It wasn't like a natural fire, but mm-hmm. well, I don't know. Is all Are all fires in the woods considered natural? Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> but it was like a city fire, like a building was on fire oh. and it's like still smoking. Like it's been smoking since two nights ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is, but yeah, strip clubs, you know, sometimes it gets too <laughs> lit in there. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah. my gosh, that's scary. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, you know, we live not too far away from the park, so we get that entertainment for free. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice break. We can tell that we're going into, you know, into fall here because the the heat kind of like has let up in the evening. Otherwise, it's just Oh, awful. nice. Yeah, that's yeah. the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's starting to cool down a little bit and we just saw rain for the first time in a f- feel like two or three months. It's just been oh, so, wow. yeah, it's been beautiful for sure. But mm-hmm. like, I don't know, I was kind of itching for some humidity and rain and like cool you know temperatures too at the same time not like hot and humid Mm because we don't really get that but um yeah we're supposed to start getting rain like tomorrow consistently and i'm like uh, i'm kind of excited kind of bummed but um yeah it's been nice here so Mm -hmm. pretty stoked for today today's like our our last two rob sun for at least a week so probably gonna go take the dog to the park and like yeah (laughs) get in like the full week's worth of Uh (laughs) playtime exactly i don't know what i'm gonna do with with pablo when uh it starts raining he's gonna be like just itching to go outside and i'm like i don't know i can't can't get you too dirty Sorry, buddy yeah (laughs) Yeah. you should get him a rain jacket oh those are so fun oh he has one he has booties rain jacket Oh, cute! Yeah, he looks adorable. I don't. I can't believe you've never seen it. I'll send. I'll send it to you. Um, yeah, send me uh, a picture. Um, edit this out or keep it in. I don't care. But well, um, while I'm looking for this, um, are you working on any projects this week personally, or is it all just school and work? Yeah. So I don't think I have. I mean, I still have like in my sort of like agenda you know the uh f1 uh view js project that i definitely want to pick back up when i have a little more time but uh we're we're like uh, i think this was like the fifth week into the term so you know there are quite a a little bit of like not quite a little bit quite a bit of dues that we have you know including the um not just deliverables but also like calls with the team so i um cool I'll check it out. Um, yeah, I have, uh, I mean, most of it is going to be just school related. So I haven't really done anything for fun. I was even thinking um, on my car ride, I was like, oh, I can't wait to just finish this up and then, you know, do like something for actual fun and kind of like see it through. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, for instance, the, I was working on a homework for my databases class and that took forever. Uh, because we have to diagram, you know, like uh, it's like ER diagrams, entity relationship diagrams. So it gets a little complicated, but it was good. Like the the homework activity as a whole was very good because the lectures, like while watching that stuff, it's so dry, but the activity was, you know, obviously like you get to do things. So it was first like some SQL queries and then we got into um, the diagramming and boy, I tell you, like, I'm so glad that, you know, at our previous job, like I got some good experience with a uh, sequel because the homework part that was like the sequel section was honestly like it was a piece of cake because nice. I, I think of that. like previous experience. So, yeah, shout out to previous uh you know experiences and <laughs> exposure to sequel and we, we had our our fair share of er charts too we did yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, part of me thinks like oh maybe i'll uh one day pursue an actual data job because uh, i mean an advanced version of that would be kind of fun i feel like or even like yeah taking a database udemy course would be fun mm-hmm. um yeah for me I'm going through this like Mevin 
project on YouTube that somebody else did, but just getting okay. myself acquainted with the stack and it's, it's just like a to-do list sort of thing, but uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to use it to build my own thing afterwards if I like the stack, you know, I'm still kind of learning it. Getting used yeah. to MongoDB again because I, I used it one time a while ago, but mm-hmm. um, getting back into it um, right now, I'm in the very early stages, so I'll keep everybody updated, but yeah, I you know, I, I made the connection with MongoDB and oh, my code. Cool. So I was like, oh, I'm good for the week. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if you like that tutorial, please let me know. Mm-hmm. And I am looking for, I, I think, I don't know if I've found, but uh, the one Vue.js project that got me going was with Brad Traversy, um, where he used the COVID, like he built a COVID tracker with right. Vue.js I and Tailwind CSS. I love Tailwind. I really, really, really like it. Um, and uh, but yeah, I didn't build, I didn't find a, or like follow any full stack tutorials. You know, using like uh, the database and um, yeah. and Node and everything. So there's not that many out there from Evan. So it's it was mm-hmm. it's not even a big video. There's like uh, maybe like twenty thousand views, if that. Like usually oh, those wow. t- sort of videos get a lot of views, but right. yeah, this one's pretty deep cut, I guess. So. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm still like, I, I was a little hesitant cause like, I'm, I don't know. I want a lot of views on it. So I know it's good, but I mean, I had a lot of thumbs yeah. up. So I was like, okay, I'll go, go with it. And, uh, yeah, so far so good. I, I really like the guy. Mm-hmm. I like, like what it is so far. And, uh, uh-huh. as long as I learn the stack, I don't really care. So yeah. Yeah. We Thank should God also another like- COVID tracker. Oh, damn. Oh, you know, it's so funny you say that. Cause for the DB project that I'm working with, on um, uh, my group, I was just like, First thing, the only request I have this whole like for this project is please let's not do anything COVID related. I'm so sick of it. Because you don't believe in COVID, right? I don't believe it. I didn't get vaccinated. <laughs> I never got tested for it. I did not catch COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Today is oh, opposite geez. day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Um, yeah, right. Well, should we just hop into TypeScript? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so I have been hearing about TypeScript a lot lately. So, the, mm-hmm. and with our Angular episode, we would mentioned TypeScript a little bit. So it only seemed natural that we're like, okay, we should do a TypeScript episode. So here we are talking about TypeScript. Mm-hmm. And in what capacity have you heard about TypeScript in the recent years? Like, in what context? Because I've only heard about it with like a couple of projects, but then like I've been hearing a lot of people like just talk about it and Mm -hmm. all the projects that I um, have associated TypeScript with are like, they seem like bigger projects and we'll get to like the why on that because I don't want to overwhelm anybody just yet. But um, yeah, just wondering in what capacity have you really heard about it? So... Obviously, like from reading forums, you know, tech forums and all that stuff, I think that's where I've come across it um, more. But incredibly, I think LinkedIn, because I am connected with a couple of other programmers, that is where I've seen people just bra- not bragging, but, you know, actually um, like uh, mentioning and um, oh, my gosh, what's the word? I don't know. Just saying good things about it, how they really like, you know, TypeScript. And I didn't do that much digging up until like yesterday because we were going to do this, uh, you know, record this episode. But yeah, like the usually the, you know, good comments come from people that have experience with JavaScript. So I think that that's why, you know, like they're more prone to, I guess, testing it out because it's more related or I don't know, like it's kind of weird because it is different than JavaScript, obviously, but um, it I don't know. I think it uh, it is more in line with uh, the folks that have used JavaScript before to be willing to like try it out and see how it compares. And um, yeah, so I really don't know all that much about TypeScript, uh, TypeScript, but I haven't I haven't even seen like a full project. You know, Um, I saw a couple of like uh, code snippets yesterday and it looks a little bit different because of how it's structured. But yeah, it's interesting, you know, how. It's been around since 2012, though, and I feel like now it's getting some traction for the past few years. Yeah. Um, I read that 
Oh, here it is. Okay. So Microsoft's embrace of open source is paying off, says Stack Overflow in its new developer survey as TypeScript has vaulted into second place behind Rust as the most loved programming language pulling away from Python with which it tied in last year's survey. Wow. Rust Mm. is already number one then. So last year, dev favorite Rust was also number one with Python and TypeScript tied at number two. This year, TypeScript clearly established itself in second place. Um, It's interesting that it uh it's tied with languages like that yeah like javascript has always been number one whatever blah 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 but um typescript is like its own beast that involves javascript right and i guess what we mean by that is that it's a um superset right i think that's the Mm. correct term for it. it's a superset it, I guess you can think of it as like a complex <laughs> JavaScript almost. It has just more complex elements added to it to like kind of prove that point. Like you could have TypeScript code in a JavaScript file if you wanted to. Like that's not, mm-hmm. you know, the right way to do it. Obviously, you're just wasting your time. But yeah, um, yeah like it's literally just it, it compiles down to JavaScript at the end of the day anyway. Right. Exactly. Um, but you wouldn't have any problem running it whatsoever. And I think you also like what you mentioned is that it had like that is a an important feature uh, difference you know between the two is that it has to be compiled whereas JavaScript doesn't need to. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just it shows. I mean, obviously, like uh, TypeScript is also classified as an OOP, you know, and JavaScript is not. Um, you have you know it's a statically typed language, whereas JavaScript is dynamic. Um, so there, there are differences, but I think that it's cool that during compilation, TypeScript will give you like the errors, whereas JavaScript is more obscure about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to do a lot more digging and debugging. Yeah, it's like, it's like up there with Java and C, right. which is so weird to think like mm-hmm. something associated with JavaScript would be. So it's like, oh, this is a game changer for Microsoft. But um, yeah, but yeah, with um. Uh, with the language like JavaScript, which is dynamic, um, you don't have to explicitly um, define the type when you're, mm-hmm. you know, declaring a variable. But here with TypeScript, just like how you would with a statically typed language, you have to explicitly say what it is. So, like, if you say, mm-hmm. um, if you want to like make a variable called num and assign the integer like 45 million <laughs> to it whatever you want to do um yeah. you in typescript you have to explicitly say that it's an integer but with mm-hmm. its close cousin javascript you don't have to do that at all so like it is interesting because this sounds like like a step backwards almost Mm-hmm. From the surface level, at least, it just sounds like okay. Why would I want to code more? Like that's just so dumb. I'm yeah. trying to I'm trying to get this project done, baby. You know, <laughs> but um, we're we're gonna get to why it makes sense to do all these extra steps. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna hand it back to you. I feel like I talked for like 45 minutes. <laughs> No, it's all good. I think, you know, because, I mean, I'm also learning about this. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I um, I feel like I'm also learning about it, you know, just by, just by gathering, like, some, some notes and seeing what you have because I haven't even, I haven't created a TypeScript file in my whole life, honestly. Um, so it is something that, you know, I'd be, like, excited to try out even though I thought it was interesting the way from like the example that I saw just uh how like the file in uh, com- like TypeScript uh compared to JavaScript looks like you know so if uh if you're like a decla- declaring a variable like you said you know in TypeScript instead of saying you know uh maybe like a var uh, num equals to 45 million and then semicolon um, in TypeScript you actually have to identify what the the you know the data type is for that variable so the like an example would be let and then your you know num and then uh, instead of equals well before you assign it to, to something else you are declaring the variable so it would be you know colon and then what type it is which is int and then semicolon and then you go on to actually um, assign a value to that variable. So I thought that it was kind of interesting. Um, I, this is, you know, just very simplified, but 
it is it does make it a little longer because you're literally spelling out what the code is supposed to do you know like or everything rather than just using like some of these assumption features that some languages have um and um i don't know i think that 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 is where like it compares to you know java and other oops um and uh it, I'm sure that there is a place for it. I mean, if there if it's risen in in popularity, you know, and like you said, uh, then I'm sure that there are like projects or you know scopes where this is way more favorable than JavaScript is or any other language because I feel like that's the interesting thing. You know, if you think of like a Venn uh, diagram, like TypeScript is in between. It's in that intersection. In, in one side you have JavaScript and other side you have Java or in like in other you know um, OOPs and it's kind of like blended um, so yeah that's interesting but I wonder if it's ever going to like overtake JavaScript you know in terms of like being the the number one you know language that powers um, the, the web I could see it yeah I guess going back to what I was gonna get at earlier yeah it sounds like an like a like a step back into like old school sort of code because javascript is always like kind of top of the charts yeah i guess javascript doesn't require um the compiling since it determines the type um in runtime so it's Mm -hmm. like okay why why have this extra step of compiling and like you know go through the trouble but um yeah, some say it's just more ro- robust and makes the code much cleaner, results in less bugs or errors. Like you said, like the jo- like with JavaScript, like you have all these weird little things you just like learn as you go. It's like that wasn't intuitive, but OK, mm-hmm. whatever. I guess I'll just note it for later. Um, but, there, you know, there's people out there who enjoy this sort of control when they're coding. Um, but yeah. others want to just avoid writing any more lines of code than they have to. So it really just boils down to the type of person you are, I guess, <laughs> when you're coding and also the scope of the project. Because um, mm-hmm. some people argue that JavaScript isn't even suitable for creating large and complex systems, which, you know, I, I can get on board with. That makes sense. Um, like yeah. those that you might find on the mo- modern web nowadays. But yeah. TypeScript is supposed to be the solution to that because of the ease of refactoring the code and being able to get Mm -hmm. your bearings a little easier in more complex systems, Mm -hmm. which is so cool because like now people who maybe didn't learn um, um, uh, object oriented, God, I can't, I can't say it. Object oriented (laughs) programming languages or oops, as I like to call them. (laughs) 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 If they didn't learn any oops, um, <laughs> this is a great segue into that because you already know JavaScript. So you just have to learn not as much as you might learn with a totally new language, which learning curve to learning another language after you've already learned one really isn't as bad at all as learning yeah. the, the first time. So like, you know, mm-hmm. you could you could you could eventually learn one anyway if you come from JavaScript. But this is going to be even easier because you already know JavaScript. So. Yeah. Um, if I if I ever uh, want to scale something really really large one day, and I'm like, well, I want to do it in JavaScript, I'm I'm definitely gonna go with TypeScript. Like it makes so much sense that because I I know eventually, you know, let's say like I was building um, like my little to do app that I'm going through on YouTube right now. Let's say I wanted to take this baby to the moon and bring on a team of people and like have everybody work on it all the time and like, you know, make it like optimize it here or like refactor it here. Like it's going to be much easier if I bring on a team of typescripters who can kind of, and like I wrote it in typescript so they can probably read it a lot better too and understand, Oh, you did this wrong. Like this is why it was broken here. Like, not that people in JavaScript don't do that, because like obviously there's masters of JavaScript, but it's just going to be way cleaner with TypeScript and much more robust and defined. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I think you hit like all very good points, and ultimately, you know, it's if it's around, um, and I think just like as a background, you know, uh, detail. Uh, it's been around since 2012. It's developed and maintained by Microsoft, you know, so 
it it is something that um, has gained popularity not just for its use, but because they. I'm sure that you know Microsoft has like evaluated um, ways in which the industry is going and how to cope with that. You know, because obviously, if a in like a language like this is getting um, is getting adopted by you know, developers is because there is a place for it and there will be a place for it. Uh, just like I think, you know, just like Rust, as you mentioned, and it's like that natural cycle, I think, of the industry, you know, that you kind of like just have to, you just have to like get used to the new ways of doing things in more efficient ways. Because, I mean, we've done several episodes on JavaScript because it's still, you know, like the the most widely used language, but it has been around for a while. And despite all revisions to ES, um, you know, uh, it's, I think, or like, or the all new ES versions that uh, get rolled out, uh, the language has its like core paradigm. So it's hard to change from that, you know. So by creating a, a language like TypeScript, it's kind of like you just, you're starting fresh. Um, and uh, you're accommodating for all the needs, you know, that are uh, in the industry now. So it, um, yeah, I feel like it, it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, there will still be the guys. I mean, because if you really think about it, you know, you'll have the frameworks uh, that go like all these full stacks. I mean, we were just talking about Mevin, but you have your Mern stacks, you have your mean stacks. And that's all, you know, using JavaScript. Um, and yeah, so sure, maybe right one day. In. Right, exactly. You know, maybe one day they'll they'll fade and there will be like, you know, a TypeScript uh, stack. Um, but for the time being, JavaScript is not going anywhere, you know. So I feel like it. they're just going to be used for different purposes um, because they're not exactly the same, even though type, TypeScript gets compiled into JavaScript. Um, so... Yeah, I think it's uh, it's interesting to see, like, you know, where it's going to be in the next five years, to be honest. Right. And I, I don't know if I just thought of this, but I don't know. And I don't even know if this um, translates super well. But um, Python has always been top of the charts as well. And so is mm -hmm. C. But in recent years, obviously, because Python's newer and um, a little more easier to learn, I think. Um, more people are like... In, in even jobs like more people are looking for python related work mm -hmm. and there's more jobs out there for python but at the end of the day python is c yeah so like right. i could see a s <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> I, I could see something similar playing out with typescript because typescript is javascript right you know what i mean so like i could see typescript being the new python what, what, in relation to JavaScript, mm -hmm. you know, in this way, like, I mean, as you said, it's been around since 2012. So maybe it is already because it is like obviously super, super popular. But um, I mean, it has the power of an oop. So it's like it is super, super valuable, I think. And even um, even the guy um, you said it was started in 2012. Um, we should mention that it was started by Anders Hedge. He 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 Helge <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> he it's probably like uh -huh. Heilsberg or whatever. Um, right. Let's just say Anders, Anders Heilsberg. Um, he was the lead architect of C Sharp. Ah, so okay. it kind of makes, makes sense. sense that he wanted something right. in the world of JavaScript. And, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so I guess that was my point. I wanted to bring it around to that. It's another sort of iteration of JavaScript uh -huh. But it's not like a framework or anything. I, I mean, I don't look at it as a framework or anything like that. I mean, it does seem interesting that you do need these extra steps of compiling and everything. But you, I think you can avoid it if you like if you're maybe using React. I think it kind of does that all for you. Um, right. But I do know you need um, Node.js if you're going to use TypeScript um, raw with compiling because uh -huh. um, you need to like download everything so it's like you can't really do that unless you have node but uh yeah it's, it does, it's not a nightmare to get started with it by all means like it's totally doable Ooh, 
Did we uh, mention that you can use modules in uh, TypeScript, whereas in oh, JavaScript right. you can't? Right. So we did not. that's a yeah, that's a, that's another important feature there. That I mean, I feel like also like a, a Python, like we, mm -hmm. we were talking about. You know, you can use modules as well. Right. So with the TypeScript, you can do that, and I think that's a huge advantage. Yeah, that is true. And do you do the same thing where you like declare them all at the top? Yeah, you do the import mm -hmm. statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that's how you can do that. And um, yeah, I feel like uh, that is one thing that I miss whenever I have to look at any sort of JavaScript, you know, like whenever I have to do anything related to JavaScript, uh, which I try not to because, I mean, obviously I work more on trying to develop um, automations, you know, for the business uh, for now, at least. Um, but there has been some talk, you know, that we're going to be doing more uh, internal tools that are going to be web based for the business. So that's where things are going to be, you know, interesting. We're, I mean, I think that we're probably going to go with the JavaScript route. Um, and uh, but it will be an opportunity to kind of like, you know, dip our toes into TypeScript, too, and see if that's uh, that's a way that we can or, you know, that's a venue that we can explore because, um, yeah, think it, you know, it's always good to have like that experimental um, mentality, even at work, to see if you can improve something and uh, kind of go from there. You know, pretty big people use TypeScript, by the way. Um, Slack uses yeah. it, PayPal uses it, um, mm -hmm. who else? Oracle uses it. Yeah. Um, all tech industries, H and R Block, like it's it's out there like people are using it, really it and is. it's working for these big complex systems um oh this is such this is kind of random this is in the article about um anders it said one of the sentences um it says not long after its release the language was praised by miguel de Icaza, the mexican programmer and i looked everywhere <laughs> and there's no other reference to him like that's it there's no previous reference to him at all so like there's obviously mexican hundreds if not hundreds of thousands if not millions of mexican developers out there but like what makes right. him the mexican programmer i know right that I, almost sounds like a hacker name the yeah like, I, I don't, that guy is legit yeah i don't know the guy but maybe he's the best <laughs> but I, I yeah. would be pissed if some guy wrote an article about me and just reference and like reduce me down to my race like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Like God, adding yeah. the fact that he's Mexican does nothing in this context. So right, and like seriously. replace Mexican with like any other race. It's going to sound so rude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was going to say it's f like flat out racist. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. This article has no share. So maybe maybe don't oh, take all man. of this for um, for a fact, but yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. It's interesting because I was uh, reading and like you said, you know, the community using TypeScript now is pretty active. Like you're talking about the fan companies, you know, like you you uh, mentioned out there. And also, mm -hmm. like, I think I saw somewhere about Google, Airbnb, Spotify, you know, a whole bunch of uh, or not Spotify, sorry, Shopify. And, um, yeah, I think that that's where, you know, it, that's, the, that's a, like an interesting, um, like, you know, factor or an interesting, uh, vertical to the whole conversation about how these languages get traction, because obviously, you know, like these companies are huge, they have tons of developers and essentially, you know, I feel like if because uh, I don't know how common it is for new languages to be designed and developed, but I feel like once, you know, you can get some of these languages like in use in production environments, you know, by these huge companies, then it just you know, it's kind of like a catalyst. It speeds up the process and it spreads. And then next thing you know, it's like the new industry standard, you know, um, because obviously industry standard depends on what is actually being used by the industry. Um, and it, I'm not going to say, you know, whether uh, some of these standards are going to be like the, the best way to go. I think it just really pertains to what you're trying to achieve, you know, like in the business that uh, that you're working in, like in your, um, you know, in your 
uh, sector or whatever. So it's, uh, but yeah, it, it's interesting because you do see like, you know, quite a bit of rotation. I mean, we were just talking about deprecated stacks last week. And we know that things, you know, they do come and go uh, and eventually you're going to have a better way or a more efficient way. But I feel like with the languages, at least, because with frameworks, I feel like the rotation is a bit faster. Um, but with languages, it seems like they do tend to stick around a bit longer, you know, because... Um, I mean, I can't even imagine what kind of work goes into creating a brand new program, a programming language, oh, let alone, no you idea. know, get it to. Yeah, exactly. Let alone like uh, actually get it to to be adopted by, you know, huge companies as we have now. So, yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting, like the not like the. I don't know if it's like the social aspect, you know, that goes into it's probably like the industry aspect that goes into the adoption of new practices and all of that. But yeah, I mean, I think that it kind of says it all there with the TypeScript, you know, all these huge companies using it. So I think it's worth if you want to if you are or if you want to become, you know, uh, a full stack web developer, um, it's worth like checking it out, just, you know, getting your. Uh, I don't know, getting your feet wet or whatever. And uh, so you can, you know, kind of like find out for yourself if you if you like it better than JavaScript or not. Mm -hmm. And you can always like just if you don't like it, just pick up JavaScript. If you if you're not coming yeah. from JavaScript to TypeScript, you know, because JavaScript's mm -hmm. going to probably be a more fun experience if you don't like TypeScript. Like I like I said, I feel like it is a, a certain type of person who might fall in love with it like whether they're coming from uh something like java or c or if they're just brand mm. new they jump right into typescript that'd be a little weird but if they are then yeah just like take it a step back go back to javascript maybe so yeah um but yeah i i guess uh with all that being said about typescript do you want to play a game yeah let's do it i'm excited okay. to see this um i'm gonna send this to the random channel in our slack right now so yeah. I don't know if you've heard the recent news from the Nintendo Direct, but there's a Mario movie <laughs> coming out. No. And it's by Illumination, who did uh, Despicable Me and Minions. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's awesome. So, okay. Well, it's sending. But uh, so we're going to play a game. And I sent you a picture of the cast. And you're going to have to tell me who's voicing the characters. Rather, okay. you're gonna have to tell me um, which character. Wait, how do you how do you say this? You're gonna have to tell me which characters from Mario these actors are voicing. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, you're does. gonna have the okay. actors in front of you, but I I blurred out the the people they're playing in the picture. It's still mm -hmm. sending. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, do you recognize oh, all these cool. people? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, for the listeners, there's Chris Pratt. Jack Black, Charlie Day, and Anna, I, I always forget, Anna Taylor-Joy. I always want to say, right. oh no, wait, Anya? Anya, Anya Taylor-Joy, yeah. I always want to say Anya Joy Taylor. It's Anya Taylor-Joy. So mm -hmm. you have those four people. Who is Chris Pratt playing as? Um, or you don't have to, you can go in whatever order you want. It's your brain, so. Okay. Well, I was going to start with her. I think I have a better shot. Would she be Princess Peach? That's correct. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, um, edit in the, the little game show sounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, Charlie Day. Would he be Luigi? Yes. Really? Yes. Cool, cool. Okay. Two for two. Um, Jack Black. Would he be Wario? I don't know. Do they have a Wario? <laughs> He's not Wario, but that's a very good guess. <laughs> Is he Mario? <laughs> no. <laughs> also okay. a great guess because if this was a live action movie, would he not right. be Mario? He looks exactly like him. I know. Especially in this picture. Um, oh, shoot. Okay, hold on. Let me think. Um, you were close with Wario. Shoot. Oh, Waluigi? No. Damn. I don't know. Well, will Chris Pratt be Mario? Yes, yes. Okay. So, Jack Black, you said mm -hmm. close to Mario. 
Waluigi. Do you Mario. want a, a little hint? Yeah. He's a villain. Bowser. Yes. Oh, man, I was going to say that first before I even started with her. Damn it. Oh. Yeah, like I could, once you see that it's Bowser, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah. But yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm yeah. yeah, especially because it's the Despicable Me people. It should be really good. I think it comes out December 2022. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little bit nice. of a wait, but it's going to be pretty freaking awesome. So. Yeah. Oh, speaking of movies, I think uh, I don't know if because I know that Dune already came out in Sweden. I still mm. don't understand how like movie releases work, you know, but like countries get it ahead of other ones by like weeks or even months. Um, but I think I'm going to go watch it when it comes out here. Yeah, I think I'm going to as well. It looks really, really good, especially because didn't the director do like Arrival and um Oh, I get some Arrival vibes oh, now thinking the other, of the trailer. What was the other movie he did? Um, or Future Me, fast forward a little bit. Uh, Dune director. Yeah, what is it? Dennis Villeneuve. Oh, oh. Yeah, what else has he done? He, he sounds really familiar. I didn't know David Lynch did the original Dune. It's interesting. Oh, he did Blade Runner. Oh, Blade my Runner. God. Oh, right. my God. And Arrival. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. I get some I get some vibes. Yeah, that's so true. Oh, Sicario, that was the other good one. Sicario was good, yeah. Um, I don't know if he directed it. I think he was just involved. I don't know. Right. But uh It looks like Yeah, it looks like for those 3 that we just talked about, including well, 4 including Dune, he was the director. I'm actually looking at IMDb right now. So Cool. Interesting. Yeah, it looks really good. Oh. And I'm excited yeah. to <laughs> to see it because I read maybe a hundred pages of the book, so I'm excited to see the hundred uh-huh. pages that I actually read. I never finished it, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I think I rented, or actually, you know what? I remember I started listening to another podcast where they were reading the book in the podcast. Um, I think like every episode was I don't know a chapter or something, oh. so. It did. It was a little. It so it was more like an audiobook, you know, instead of like reading the actual pages. But um, I think I started to like lose track of all the characters, and I was a little like confused. Mm-hmm. So I was like, that's probably why I like printed work better than audiobooks because I feel like my listening skills sometimes are not the best. Um, and with books with a lot of characters, you know, it's uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm more of like a reader and a watcher than a listener. Oh, I see. Um, so, yeah. I am reading, I actually got two books. Um, I'm reading The Atomic Habits that we talked Let's about. Go. Yeah, I really like it. Um, and I also got The Song of Achilles, which I don't have TikTok, but. There is this guy that read on like a whole bunch of books that got really popular on TikTok and he has a book tube, you know, like his name is Jack Edwards, really cool YouTube channel that he has. And he ha- is a major in, um, you know, in uh, Ing- English literature. So he reads a lot of books and that is one that he recommended. He said it's really, really good. So it talks about like the story of Achilles and Patroclus, like his uh, cousin, all the the whole, you know, story about uh, Troy and the Odyssey, like those novels. Um, And I uh, decided to pick it up. So that is one that I'm going to be, you know, reading next. I definitely want to finish The Atomic Habits first. So nice. Yeah, I've been reading that like every morning before I start work. It feels like really good to like start the day with that sort of book because then you're like oh i'm so productive i'm gonna get my life together (laughs) Uh exactly yeah like it's a and it it's like i'm trying to make it a habit to read every morning now because um Mm -hmm. because dylan she would read every morning and i was like how do you even like how can you do that but then i'm like well i'm working really early sometimes like it's you know like it's not like i'm not active in the morning with my brain they're like i should just read instead So I've been really happy to do that. And uh, especially reading that sort of book, like it's, it's, uh, it basically, if you guys don't know, Atomic Habits is like not a step-by-step guide to pick up and get rid of bad habits, but it's like, it, like, it's just a cool, um, it's almost like a psychology book because it goes really deep into like how habits happen 
how pe- like it goes into addiction. Um, it goes into general small little um, steps that you can take that all add up to one big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, like I think the big opener in the book was that uh, there there was like a British racing like a bicycle racing team Mm. and I guess they were really really bad for a long time so they hired a new manager I think I'm kind of paraphrasing this whole story but they hired a new manager and then um, he looked at every tiny little detail of the team like how they um, they weren't like keeping their bikes clean and they um, they made them slightly more aerodynamic in certain parts and then they were like making them come like to practice 30 minutes early like just like really small things but it was so yeah. many small things that it all added up to like making the team a lot better because then they ended up leading for like a couple years and winning big tournaments and like they were the worst so like wow I don't know, that's like kind of the idea of the book I'm not like trying to preach like be better by doing small little things and stuff but like it's just uh it looks into that basically and it's uh I'm already like picking up good things as like I nice. do little um, actions throughout the day that I'm like, oh, that probably wouldn't help me like get better at this or like whatever, you know, what my goals are or whatever. But yeah, so far, I really like the book. I, I, I hope to hear more from you once you get deeper into it. Yeah, definitely. We should, you know, have a little like maybe a. Uh, a book discussion or something because I feel like honestly you know it's a it's a book with like it's a book with invaluable skills because I think um, you know obviously I don't want to like sound bad in a way where uh, I've read a book before when I was like in school and you know I feel like I had a lot like school still brings me a lot of anxiety so I read this book to kind of like cope with that Um, and I learned from the book, you know, to like think in a different way where, um, we can control what we eat, we can control what we drink, we can control what time we go to bed, but has anyone ever thought about controlling the way you think? And it's a hundred percent possible, you know, like it's because it's a process, you know, like you can, uh, change it. And um, it's very difficult, you know, because the brain is such a powerful thing for good and bad sometimes. Um, But once you are able to like really uh, focus and like check the way that you think, like you said, you know, and also like uh, change like your mentality, um, maybe see things from a different angle or even teach yourself how to think differently. I feel like that's when you see some amazing things happen. So that's why this book is like very much I think uh, related to the one that I read before but I liked it I'm still in the beginning but I liked where he was going with you know in terms of uh, because I feel like it's how it goes like you know it's a it's how you think um, and what you can do about it you know because a habit is a habit to like you it's a you know it's an action but obviously it comes from like what you want to do and you make decisions decisions are thoughts you know so um yeah I think that it's a really cool book for, especially like if you're you know trying to like switch things up and you just need um like a motivating factor like you said too you know it's like a good uh break from just looking at a screen like pick up a book mm-hmm. and read it I recommend it <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah a couple things like I started doing I, I don't know, like I, I've always loved Instagram, but I realized like I'm spending way too much time on it. So I put a 15 minute limit on the app and like, even when I open it for the first time, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't even be opening it right now. I don't need it right now. Mm-hmm. So like I just put it down and then like I'd get back to work or whatever I'm supposed to be doing. Um, yeah. And, uh, I'm trying to get better at making the bed. So I'd usually make the bed now. I, I, was never really a bed maker I was when I was younger but I hated doing it so then when I became an adult I was like fuck yeah I don't have to make the bed anymore (laughs) (laughs) but uh that's so funny you say that I can't I can't like get up and not make the bed yeah well I I realized like when I make it I'm like oh I already did something productive and good like it kind of sets you up I feel like like in that little thought process of like okay what else am I gonna do that like would Mm -hmm. get things done 
Yeah, it's the it, it really starts with the little things. I think that's the cool thing. Like no one needs to, you know, become like a hyper, I don't know, productive programmer overnight. That's just not going to happen. I feel like it's like a collection of good habits and choices, you know. Um, and uh, that's like where obviously the book just presents you with a theory, but you have to put it into practice. So it's all about, you know, knowing how to apply it. And um, yeah, just, you know, bit by bit to like make good choices, people. That's right. <laughs> all right. Oh, um, one last thing I wanted to mention. Um, if you guys are in the market for an M1 MacBook, apparently they're $150 off right now on Amazon and Best Buy. So Ooh. that's happening. Um, I don't know when this episode goes out, so hopefully it's not over. But I'm pretty sure it's not like a super temporary thing. So, and I'm sure that's also just because new MacBooks are coming very soon. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't want Looking the out for that brand event. new one, you can get the one from like a year ago, and it still has M1. So, and I'm still I'm, yeah. I'm really really considering doing the Mac Mini with the M1 because my laptop, like I'd. Oh, okay. So I wanted to, God, Jesus, I'm so like frazzled right now. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I forgot to do my recommendation, which I wanted to actually talk about. So this will go back to the Mac mini in a second. But um, my computer has been just full of junk and so slow and just like crazy lately. So I downloaded Mac Keeper and... I cleared up like 20 gigabytes of junk. No way. Yeah. And what? I saw like I had a couple um, duplicates of really big files. And I was like, oh, my God, like um. I never would have caught that unless I had Mac Keeper. And um, there is mm. also like a chat where somebody can literally talk to you and be like, oh, like um, do this. And then like you'll clear up a ton of space, too. Or like you can. uh Ooh. Uh, I don't know, like it go, it like shows like your CPU usage. It's kind of like activity monitor, but it also like has these buttons that show how to actually make it better instead of just like you Googling every single thing and how to fix it. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, it, I just know like my computer is like full of crap right now and uh, it's just like getting slow and I wanted to finally update the OS and I thought that mm-hmm. this would help. So like I'm still recommending that keeper, but I couldn't even update it because you need 35 gigabytes to download. Um, mm. What is it? Not Catalina, but because I'm big, sir. Is that where they're still at? I don't even know. Uh, That's what I have. I'm like two behind. So I, Oh, I, I have Catalina right now, but if I say software update, then it prompts me to download Oh, this is just what I'm talking about. It takes forever to load everything. It's, just, it's ridiculous. Oh, um, Big Sur, yeah. yeah. That's the next one. But it's oh, okay. it's annoying because it says 11 to 12 gigabytes, which I have. I definitely have 11 to 12 uh-huh. gigabytes free. But then I download it, and then it downloads it, and then it says you need 35. So I'm like, oh, which damn. is it, dog? Like, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So I don't know whose fault that is. I don't know. I really, like, I cleared up so much stuff, and I don't know. Chrome definitely takes a toll. I'm actually thinking about doing Firefox like you. So, but yeah, yeah. I recommend Mac Keeper. So, um, me being the spoiled little brat where like I just like get tired of the things I have because it's slow or whatever. Like I'm really thinking about doing the Mac Mini because like I really mm-hmm. don't take my laptop anywhere. I realized mm-hmm. like I'll go on the balcony yeah. or like if my internet goes out, I'll go to Starbucks or something and work there. But like yeah. for like everyday usage, like a Mac mini would be great personally. And then if I need my laptop, I'll just use my laptop and it, like I'll deal with like mm-hmm. slightly slow, whatever. But I really want that M1, you know, but I don't want to pay yeah, same for here. the laptop price. Yeah, it's like they half. are. Those are. Uh huh. Exactly. We I just went to the uh, to the store the other day and I saw the IMAX, you know, the colorful ones that they have now. Uh, so thin, but the screen is a little too small for me. Yeah. Um, and I, I like them, but I think, uh, I think I'm going to be upgrading to a laptop. I, I just want to wait to see, you know, what they're going to showcase at the next event. 
uh, and then make a decision because uh, my computer is also like, you know, I think that my laptop, um, the specs, the hardware specs were like on the cutoff being able, uh, like of, uh, you know, being able to actually run Big Sur. So my laptop is 2015. It's a six year old laptop. And I don't think I'll be able to upgrade to the next OS when they release it. So I, um, yeah, I'm still contemplating a bit about which, uh, you know, which laptop I'm going to go with. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I have to I have to wait and see. Yeah, same. We'll see what the prices look like, too, because, wow. yeah, it's usually like an arm and a leg. So. Yeah, you can buy a, a car or you can buy the new iPhone. Like, just wait yeah. for the MacBook prices this year. Um, Seriously. Did you did you have anything to recommend? No. Yeah. I So I got these um, Ikea lamps um, for my oh desk. My I put one on God. each side and they are called the Fado, F-A-D-O table lamp um, where it has like a glass dome, you oh, know, and then things. obviously you put and oh, then, yeah. yeah, you put like your, you know, your light bulb in there and I got the white ones. Uh, so at night, if I change because I use my uh, smart bulbs in them. So at night they look really cool. Oh, those are cool. Um, I like that. Yeah, I um yeah, they were they're pretty affordable. Mm-hmm. It's like 25 bucks each. Uh, yeah. and I decided to get one for each side of the desk. Um, and I'm still, you know, I think I like the setup that I have now. They are a bit bigger than I would have liked, you know, but I do have a long desk so I can make it work. Um and uh, yeah, I've had them like for, you know, the past almost a week now on my desk. So it's been it's been kind of fun, especially at nights because we haven't put up like a ceiling fan or like, a you know, a light in the in the bedroom. So obviously at night it gets really dark, um, as we know from a few previous, <laughs> uh, you know, recordings. But uh, now, yeah, it looks pretty cool at night here um, and I like them a lot. Awesome. Might have to yeah, go check that so out. So I recommend that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, um, okay. So make sure you guys leave us reviews and email us and tweet us. Like, talk to us. Just, like, you know, interact because we're friendly and fun and we want to help everybody out if they need it. And we also would love to be helped because we don't know everything. So correct us if we, like, get something wrong, too. Like, whatever you want to do. Um, just, like, you know feel free to chat with us and i do eventually want to take advantage of discord slash patreon and like kind of get those going soon because we already have the patreon going but um once we get like a certain amount of users i would i don't know what number but i would love to like get a discord for sure for everybody because that would be that'd be the most convenient way to be in contact because i mean twitter it's kind of like a little difficult because there's so much going on um and then like any other social media i feel like would just be worse so maybe discord would be the way to go um yeah so yeah um check us out on patreon uh, it's like patreon.com slash tech heads um the link will be below as well um mm-hmm. i'll put everything else below oh uh, tech heads pot at gmail.com and i think i i think i got them all did i get them all anna yeah i'm pretty sure that's it okay All right. Well, with that, tech heads out. We'll see you next week. Peace. Bye.